Check out this 3D metallic copper epoxy. We're gonna transform plywood into a functional table. We've also been given the challenge to match actual marble and turn our epoxy into striated white Carrera marble. We've traveled all the way to New York City and in this video we're going to show you step by step how we accomplished these two projects. Learn about our tips, tricks and challenges of working in New York City. We started with zero tools and we remodeled these kitchen countertops in three days. We also built a table and we're going to show you step by step how we accomplished everything. We were inspired around every corner and we built this project right on the sidewalk in downtown Manhattan. In this video, we're also going to show you exactly how to mount and install an undermount sink to your countertop project. From Wall Street to Main Street, join us as we show the fun, the fabrication, and the challenges of creating your own do-it-yourself countertops in the Big Apple. Staying budget friendly doesn't mean you need to sacrifice design. Learn now how to create your own custom marble countertops. We're also going to show how to create a pounded copper effect over any surface. Our adventures took us all the way to Times Square. We went live on our videos and we showed Natasha step by step how to get involved in her do-it-yourself project. She was blown away at the simplicity of these effects. We won't forget our time here in New York City. In this video, we're going to show you many pro tips. Watch now how we remove drips, mount undermount sinks, install the countertops, seal everything at the end, and finish this project like a pro. Visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Our epoxy rocks, Stone Coat Countertops. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. We flew all the way across the country from Oregon to New York City to build this project out. We can't wait to share our experience. We're on our way. Let's get started. New York, SCCNYC. Our adventure truly began when we hit the tarmac, got our rental car, and started our journey to get to our destination in New York City. This was an amazing trip. Logistically, it threw a lot of curveballs, but in this video, we're going to show you step by step how we got a project done in this city environment. First impressions were quite grand when we really got to soak in the city, the art, the buildings, the streets, the sounds, the smells. They all really brought this to life for us and really opened our eyes to the grandeur of this part of the country. We're now on our way to Natasha's house. We were invited out here to do this project. Let's go meet her right now. You ready, buddy? I'm ready. Let's do this, man. Yeah. Hello, how are you? Thank you. Natasha's a well-known blogger in New York City, and what she wanted was her space really updated in this New York Skyline apartment right across from Central Park. So what we had to do was measure her kitchen, and now we were on our way to Home Depot to get our supplies. It was important to have accurate measurements so that when we did get to Home Depot, we could solicit some help from a panel saw operator to get our pieces cut to size so it was less work. Got this, guys. You got yeah. it. You heard him. You got it. <laughs> we confirmed all of our measurements twice to make sure we didn't leave the store without any pieces we may need. We got the tools necessary to do the work and we met some great New Yorkers. We met another nice New yep. Yorker. What's nice secret, carpenter, man? superior <laughs> cook. And yeah. we love the Brooklyn. origin people. Brooklyn. You gotta talk Brooklyn. to people from Brooklyn. And these right. guys That's are the right. best. That's why they imported them to come yeah. up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's important to follow your tool checklist. You want to make a list of everything you're going to need for your project so you don't need to make multiple trips to the store, especially when it takes so long to drive through a city of this hustle and bustle. Let's finish getting our supplies. Yeah, we're going to do that copper table, so I'm actually looking for a color that's similar in, in color to give us a base on that MDF. Cocoa rum right there. We're going to try that out. Boom. And then we're also going to get that natural gray. We're going to get one quart each because it's not a lot of stuff. Let's do it. We didn't ship any of our tools to New York City knowing we were really going to have to tool up when we got there. It was like starting a business from scratch. So we had to make sure we had all the sundries that we needed to accomplish this project. Whoa. Wow. That was an adventure going through Home Depot in New York. Mitch, we just went through some craziness in Home Depot, man. Intense. 
Guys, pants. we're in Brooklyn at Home Depot, and I gotta tell you, the nicest people we've met in New York so far are right here, right? That's right, totally. Uh, guys, we're gonna go back to the job, we're gonna get this thing going. We're basically starting an epoxy countertop business because we came here with no tools. Toolless, right. <laughs> we're gonna ship them home, but let's get started. We're gonna have fun, we'll see you in a moment. What we're doing right now is just making this New York Skyline apartment our workshop. Uh, we, we've really had to get creative because we've got a small space. We worked with the superintendent to, to get a space set up outside to do a few cuts. But we've basically brought our shop to New York by going to Home Depot, getting the supplies that we need. And that's one of the keys with Stone Coat Countertop Projects is you can get everything at your local hardware store and start making your own projects right away. As Mitch was returning our rental truck, because we certainly didn't want to drive in New York anymore, now that we had everything that we needed, I was getting all the floors prepped, we were getting everything ready so we could really work in this environment without making a mess. We knew we were going to drip epoxy, so we made extra certain to mask everything off so we could make our mess that we needed without worry. Prior planning prevents poor performance, so we're laying everything out to get prepped to start building this project. Guys, one of my very favorite tools is the paint pyramid. You never underestimate the power of this little guy. <laughs> okay guys, this is a piece of three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood. The reason you want cabinet grade is there's much less bow in that kind of material, and it's not full of voids on the edges. And so that's what you're looking for if you're gonna make furniture, tabletops, and countertops out of plywood. And we're gonna take this plywood, we're gonna use Tight Bond 2 wood glue, and we're gonna double it up with another sheet of plywood to create a one and three quarter inch thick table. We're actually gonna turn this plywood into copper right in front of your eyes. Let's get started. The two major elements to this job is a table and countertops. We're starting with the table. We'll build this out of plywood because it's self-supporting. We know we're just gonna have a table base and no cabinet supporting this, so plywood is our choice on this project. Okay, for the countertop portion of this project, we want a finished height of one inch. So we got two sheets of half inch MDF so that we can laminate those together using our Tight Bond 2 wood glue, and then we're gonna use three quarter inch screws to attach this together so it's a very permanent bond. Let's get started with that. I needed to keep the overall thickness of the countertops at one inch because we're tucking this underneath a tile backsplash. Yeah, we're just making a spot for these screws to be countersunk into the MDF so that we don't have uh, bulging screw heads underneath our countertop. Building stone coat countertops is really conducive to working and remodeling. Remodeling always presents little challenges and throws curveballs at you, but this was a reminder of how versatile we can build things just to the job site needs. Okay guys, we got these laminated together. We're gonna let this set up, and then it's time to actually cut the sink out of it. That's gonna be fun. So the customer's gonna keep this old existing backsplash, so I'm gonna cut this uh, grout out on the very bottom and then we're all done and installing the stone coat, we're gonna regrout that. Be sure to use finesse when demoing your project so you don't cause yourself more work in the end. If we take caution and remove these counters with care, we'll save this tile backsplash and we can install right underneath it coming up. Are there more blades? They are silicone down like they never wanted to be removed. You can see it all. Can you get a multi-tool on there? No. We're gonna have to get access to that. It's, it's glued all the way. Okay, let's move, uh, let's move this stuff. We were told this was a large kitchen for Manhattan. I'm still skeptical of that. You're good? I can use the multi-tool now. That's how we do it. We'll break the caulking seal so we can get this countertop out without hurting the backsplash. Bingo! Nice job, and buddy. There it goes. All that work, Chris, for that little piece. I hope it's happy. We burned through our brand new multi tool. It's time to go get a backup. This is remodeling. All right, we'll be back. I hope it's still open. It should be open. I could get it open until like 10. There was a hardware store that carried tools right down the street, so we didn't have to go far, but they didn't have our plywood and MDF. $100, make it holler. As you can see, we had already been working a long day. 
<laughs> well, we didn't have to go back to uh, Brooklyn. That's good, right? Yes. You need a drink? Yeah. Dive, dive, dive. Down below. All right. Our new multi-tool work like a charm. Guys, we are here at Lady Liberty. We're having a blast and we're happy that demo is over. Extremely happy. That was a Corian kitchen. They used three to four tubes of silicone to keep that secured to her cabinets. It took a while to get it done and ripped out of there, but uh, it's complete. Just like Lady Liberty, we persevered and we're done with the demo. On to the next step. To finish up our first day on the project, we're going to glue our two pieces of MDF together to build a countertop between these two walls. You can really custom build anything to any size you'd like. We'll be like, hey, check it out. Right. This we're is our subsidiary in New York. <laughs> it was a ton of fun seeing some of the sites in New York City. The scale was amazing. Look at these, man. Look at these geodes and oh my goodness. Look at this, Chris. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Let's go check it out right now. Let's go check it out. One of my favorite things to do is look at natural stone in real life and the colors that are actually presented by Mother Nature. I was astounded at this shop. Make sure not to break anything though. Look at this right here. So pretty. Look at that, Chris. It's crystal clear, dude. Wow. Look at this. This is from uh, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Fortress of Solitude right there. Hey guys, are you interested in learning how to make a geo tower light stand that is out of this world? Because this is really cool. If you're interested, let us know in the comments below and we'll do a video on how to make this right away. It was fun being immersed in the culture of the city. We went to the market each night, got our dinner. This was also a blast. Day two has arrived and I gotta say this was my first time ever walking to work. Okay, we're about ready for the next step. We got these two boards screwed and glued. We're gonna flip this over, and because this is longer than eight feet, we actually need to scab a piece in down here, and we're gonna scab a piece in under here, and this wall is out of square, so our top piece will scribe to the wall so we have a nice tight fit. It'll look like it grew into that wall. There was no shortage of challenge on this project. We went up and down the stairs each time we needed to make a cut. We set up shop right outside the entry and we did some of the necessary cutting that we couldn't pre-plan right there on the street. Again, we're laminating two sheets of half inch MDF together to get a total of a one inch thick finished countertop. Make sure you glue and screw that together and it'll be solid for years to come. We're gonna custom cut this scab because it's out of square at this wall. So make sure you measure carefully, take your time and you'll get a great fit. Most of the work on a new construction project is simply cutting the MDF to shape and getting that ready to epoxy. Once we get to the stone coat countertop portion, that's the fun part. Mitch and I have worked well together for a number of years. It's easy for us to fabricate a piece like this because we've planned ahead. We're also leaving about one eighth of an inch away from the wall here so that it's easily slid into place when these base cabinets arrive. Be sure to dry fit all of your pieces before you move too far ahead so that you can be sure everything will fit just perfectly. All right guys, what we're doing now is we're taking this undermount sink and we're getting it prepped in this cabinet. I got one rail here. It's a half inch down from the top of this cabinet. 
because this is a half inch thick and you want this below the surface of your counter, nice and flush with where that counter's gonna sit. So I'm just getting my, uh, my runners pre-screwed so I can screw that in and we'll get this uh, undermount sink set. Okay, what I'm doing is just getting rid of this lippage right here, and then I'll sand this flush. Whenever you laminate wood together, you may have a little bit of lippage, and that's all we're addressing here is just getting rid of that lippage so when you rub your hand down this finished project, it's going to feel silky smooth. We'll progressively go through our different grits of sanding disc all the way up to 220 grit so we get a nice smooth surface of MDF. I'll also go around the perimeter of our project and give it a radius so that the epoxy has a way to flow over that 90 degree corner. 90 degrees aren't your best friend, small radiuses are just fine. Okay guys, how far do you set the sink back in the cabinet? Between four and four and a half inches is about industry standard. So we know right here, we have an inch and a half overhang and we're gonna go about four and a quarter back. So that's what we're gonna do. That's where we have the sink set. And then back here is where our faucet's gonna come up. So you wanna make sure you got plenty of room to mount that faucet. We like to do an infinity edge around the perimeter of the undermount sink. So we're gonna come in about an eighth of an inch all the way around this perimeter so that when you look down into the sink, you don't see the sink, you just see the cutout. And then that gives you a nice place to tuck that silicone and keep it a nice clean look. So let's set up our infinity edge right now. I always like to put three marks on my piece because that will tell you if you've made a mistake in measuring because they won't line up. When you're measuring for your sink, you want to measure off the same point each time. So I'm going to measure from here to this point, from here to this point to get my actual dimension. The timeless saying, measure twice, cut once, absolutely applies. So double check your measurements, make sure your sink cutout is going to be perfect, and then confirm that by measuring the inside dimension of your sink as well. Okay, I've confirmed my measurements. I know that I'm a quarter inch small on my width and my depth. That way I have an eighth inch all the way around that will overhang my sink and give me that perfect infinity edge. Let's go do the radius cutouts with the drill bit and then we'll connect the dots using our skill saw. Here we go. We have a rectangular sink, so I'm gonna use a half inch radius drill bit in the corners because that matches our sink radius and then I'll connect the dots with our skill saw and we're gonna have our rough cutout of our undermount sink. After I follow the perimeter with my skill saw, I'm going to use my multi-tool to finish out my cuts where the skill saw actually couldn't reach. After that, I'll pop out the scrap and it's time to do some finished sanding work so we get a very nice smooth finish. We finish everything to 220 grit on our sandpaper. When I work on stone coat countertops, I drink Poland Spring. Oh, 100% natural spring water brought to you by Poland Spring. Stone coat countertops. I'll drink it up. We'll finish prepping out this undermount sink by sanding the inside corners by hand, then we'll switch to our random orbital sander to do the flat sections. All right, we switched to 220 grit. We'll get this nice and smooth. All right, what we're gonna do next is put a radius on this sink. We're gonna do the top edge, the bottom edge, and the side that hits that stove as well as that front edge. We're just gonna use our 220 because it's gonna be a very slight radius, but a little radius is much better than a 90 degree cut. Let's do it. Most faucet fixtures require a one and three eighths diameter hole so that they can be mounted. Here we're gonna use our hole saw to prep this countertop so it can receive that single hole fixture. <laughs> All right, Mitch, we're on Wall Street right now. What about Main Street? How do people find us and why should they? They can find us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com over the phone, 541-450-1976 or shoot us a direct email at stonecoatcountertops at gmail.com. Do you have old laminate? old countertops that you want to make them look new, but you don't want to get busted in the market, then visit us right now and see that you can do your kitchen for under $250.
There's no time for downtime in New York City. The sidewalk we were working on was a hustle and bustle, and we were moving right along. Next, we're going to use some all-purpose Bondo putty. We're going to prep this by adding a little bit of hardener, mixing it up, and we'll use our Bondo spreader to apply a thin coat on all the finished edges. This is going to make everything nice and smooth. We're also going to address the top seams on the long countertop that we built so that you won't have any ghosts through or any signs of a seam when we apply the epoxy. Automotive putty is a great prep step to make sure everything's nice and smooth. Hey guys, this is really indicative of plywood. It's got voids, chigger marks from the milling process, things of that nature. The Bondo hides that and makes this thing look perfect when we're done. Plywood always requires a little bit more prep because there's more voids and rough edges, but that's okay. The Bondo does the trick just like it does on the MDF. We'll finish smoothing out that Bondo with 220 grit sandpaper after that Bondo is set up. Be sure to waterproof your projects at sinks and dishwashers. This is a uh, Red Guard material. It's a roll-on waterproofing membrane, so we'll do two coats of this on the bottom side, anywhere there's uh, gonna be risk of water getting there. All right. So the reason Mike just spray painted that black is we are mounting an undermount sink under there, and we don't want the red to show through. It's a black sink, so you put a little black paint there, You'll never know that that got red guarding. Yes, yeah, time for paint primer in one. Two coats, we're gonna go get this right now. Let's do this. So what we're doing is we have this tinted to a copper looking paint and primer in one. We're gonna do two coats on this table because this table is gonna be a pounded copper when we're done. So let's do that right now. I'll tell you what, that Bondo on the edges really made this slick as glass. That's a really good pro tip to get perfect edges. It's always good to do two coats thin rather than one coat thick. Thin to win, remember that. Mitch, who's your favorite Sesame Street character? Uh, Elmo. You know, this is like where they filmed. Right. Elmo, Big Bert, Snuffleupagus. Snuffleupagus. Cut. That's my favorite character. <laughs> okay, guys, question of the day. Who is your favorite Sesame Street character? Tribute to the Big Apple. We've applied two coats of paint and primer in one, we sanded between coats, we brought everything upstairs, and now it's time to decorate these and make them look like natural stone. Okay, Natasha, this is the piece we're gonna match with the rest of your kitchen. Are you excited? I'm super excited. Do you think we can do it? I feel like you've maybe done this before. Yeah, it's our second project, we're ready. I trust you. <laughs> Here we go, guys, we're gonna match this marble right now. All right. We've used white metallic powder to tint this epoxy white. This is a fun look to do because you're gonna make everything sparkle a little bit and look like minerals are shining when the sun hits it. We really like to tint using that white metallic powder. We used our 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel to spread the epoxy evenly. We've chopped the surface with our chop brush and then we brushed long horizontal strokes on all the edges. So all I'm doing right now guys is just dipping into a little bit of black spray paint and because I have some white metallic in the mix here, the more that you chop it, the more that it'll turn gray, which is more like our sample piece. So that's what I'm doing is I'm just sporadically putting that in and then I'll probably brush this in too to give us a nice underpainting before we do our striations. I want to reiterate that this could be a finished countertop just like this. This is a real classic Carrera marble, super easy to achieve, but we're going to take it a little further and use this as our backdrop. But first I'm going to just mute this out a little bit by brushing it in horizontal strokes and then we'll start our striations. You guys ready? Here we go. We'll give great depth to this project by brushing out some of these effects and creating a really interesting underpainting before we put in the fractures and the striations. All right, guys, I'm gonna start with our crisscrossies. We're gonna do that across this top and then we're gonna bisect it with those straight lines. Let's do this. We're gonna use our black metallic powder additive. We'll add this to our clear epoxy, mix it up, and then we can use a paint stick to start adding our striations and our fracture lines. Check this out. When you squiggle them, and then you're just gonna use that paint stick to drag those through 
to give you some faint lines, some dark lines. After dripping our lines across the surface, we'll just straighten those out as needed with our paint stick. It's simple and easy. We can also use a variation of black spray paint on the tip of our paint stick to create a similar effect with different shades. I really liked how this project came out because we used mostly metallic. We did our white metallic, black, black metallic, metallic, and then a little bit of white and black spray paint. How'd you like that? I really liked the way that looked. It, it looked just in line with her sample she gave us. And right. light coming in from her kitchen, that top is gonna sparkle. Yes, it's gonna sparkle when the sun hits it. It's gonna be metallic. And when you hone that kind of look, it gives you a very natural look. A heat gun is a great choice to move color to make it look much more natural. Okay, Natasha, you showed us the marble that you like. This is our first go at it. Mm -hmm. We've got all kinds of different striations going. What do you think? What's your first impression? Um, it is quite incredible to see how you do this and how little color you actually need to get uh -huh. it going. Do you want a lot more lines in it? I, do you, do you... I, I don't think I want it. I don't think I want it to be as busy as this one is. Because if it was me, I'd probably stop here uh -huh. just because if I keep adding more yeah. every time we bisect, I don't want to do too, too busy. busy you exactly. Know? This to me is kind of my interpretation of that. Of that. Totally. You like it? I do. I do. Do you want us to do any more? Don't be shy. We're happy to do it. Um, I don't know that I want you to do more. No. I like it. I, I, I don't want to influence you, but I think we're on the same page. Right. This came out fantastic. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've never done a, a Carrera. Like you could see the depth, you know, right. because you got that first layer right. that we did. Then some of those are really wide and fan mm -hmm. and then you get the more sharp ones. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's beautiful. Awesome. All right, so you saw it come to life. We're going to match those to the rest of the kitchen. Super. And we'll uh, continue on. Wonderful. Okay, guys, our final step of today is to simply torch the top to get the excess bubbles out, and we'll be ready for our clear coat tomorrow. Let's do this. Now that we have an approved piece with our customer, it's time to replicate that same look on the rest of the pieces in the project. So here we are, we're chopping a little bit of that black metallic and black spray paint. We created our undertone, then we're drizzling some of that black metallic and clear epoxy across this piece then we use the heat gun to make those things look natural. We're gonna blow that around with the heat gun. That creates very natural lines and it's simple to do. Next is the copper table. This was a fun portion of the project and we just simply used brown and copper mixed into the clear epoxy. Sometimes a simple recipe will give you a bold look. This brown and copper mixed together on this table was fun to do. We simply used our 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel. We chopped the surface. We brushed those edges. Then we took some bronze spray paint. We misted that on the surface of the countertop and it gave a really good hammered look. That was fun to see that come to life. Be sure to torch it three times and you're ready for your next step. What we're doing here, guys, is we're going to use some denatured alcohol. This is substantially different than isopropyl alcohol because it's got a higher water content and it's going to create more craters, which is the effect that we're going for. And we're going to hit that up right now and see how it looks. The copper and brown is going to be awesome. Yes, copper, brown mixed together. Hit it with some alcohol. Boom, you got magic. This is why we came to New York, dude. Use my shirt as a billboard. My first experience in Times Square left me speechless. That place is amazing. We gathered our thoughts and despite the crowds, we went live right in Times Square. This was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Live from New York, it's Tuesday night. What's up, insider? That was sick, man. You hear that? Day three is upon us. It's time for our clear coat. We're done with the decorative coat. Let's get started. All right, guys, we're back for the second day. What we're going to do is sand any of the edges and drips. We're going to get this all sanded with 220 grit, 
so we can do our final clear coat. And that clear coat is going to be the icing on the cake. When you do your second coat, any of those nibs and nubs and imperfections, they disappear. Right. Okay guys, it's time for the second coat. We're gonna use our same stone coat countertop epoxy. We're gonna do that in a one to one ratio. We're gonna mix it for about two minutes and we're gonna use three ounces per square foot. We know exactly how much to use because that's what we used yesterday. So we'll mix the same amount up and we'll get this thing finished up. You got a fresh battery, man? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna apply that coat and we trowel it, chop it. Why do we torch it? Removes the air bubbles. Yes. With ease. Front to back, across that whole piece, do that three times, you're complete. Three times, torch it, get it flat, and you'll look as good as Lady Liberty. Mitch is singing. Do not delete that audio. You gotta sing, dude. Come on, man. All right. There you go. All right, so you start lying, right? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And then, yeah, bring some paint. Yep, just drag it all the way through. Just really close until it starts moving. See that? It's like you're painting with heat, you know? See how it looks more real when you do that? This is the fanciest outfit I've ever seen doing something. <laughs> yes. Natasha had never worked with our products before and she had a blast just making some of those veins and learning the tips and tricks to making great projects. After application was complete on our second coat, our clear coat, we went out and really soaked in some of the sites in New York City. I got to admit, it's a definite bonus to be able to see these sites after completing a project. What's up, insiders? Come with us right now as we go to the top of the World Trade Center, 102 floors in 42 seconds. Let's do this. Oh my God. Oh boy. Welcome to One World Observatory. That was cool. Diverse and ever changing. The city and skyline reveal themselves uniquely to each observer. We have a pro tip of the day for you right now. What is that? We wouldn't want to be doing our project if these windows were open. It would be way too windy. So that's the pro tip. Shut those windows, shut those doors, and kill that air movement, and you'll get a really good outcome every time from Stone Coat Countertops. That's your pro tip of the day. Enjoy the view. Morning. All right, what I'm doing is I'm just peeling this tape back that I previously installed before we poured, and I'm pulling those drips out so I could razor knife that front edge. Whenever we're caulking a uh, countertop to wall, you're always gonna wanna use a latex caulking that will take paint in case you wanna change the color of your wall. Silicone up here will repel any paint in the future. So I overfill this caulk joint, and then I'll use my finger, get most of it out, come back with a damp sponge, and that leaves you a real clean line.
what I'm gonna do now is tape off the perimeter of my sink, my piece, and I start with my four corners, because those are the most difficult to get nice and straight. And then I can uh, just tape on my straight runs. And here I'm just coming right down again to right where it starts to radius. So the only place where silicone will be is right in that cap. And we're nearly ready to uh, silicone this piece in. Just one easy bead around all the cabinetry, slide the piece in. I'll also do a heavy bead around that sink so I ensure I have a nice watertight seal there. Chris, you want this shot? Good. I'm good over here too, bro. Okay. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we just have a little bit of roughness because we peeled that edge, and I'm just gonna use our sandpaper to make that nice and smooth to the hand. So when you rub underneath those counters, it feels clean. Yeah, just that's all it takes right there, and that feels really good. You get rid of any little lip that may be left by putting that tape down. Now that I've tooled all that silicone out with my finger, you just simply peel this tape off. All that residue is stuck on the tape rather than on the sink or my piece. Next step is now to use our white caulking here where the countertop meets the tile. Tool it off with your finger and then peel your tape. See how smooth that edge gets. We already removed the tape that we had previously put on the underside of our countertop and now it's easy to remove the drips by heating up our knife and simply going through and cutting that off. It's the next day so this is still very pliable but it requires zero dust making because we're using a knife to remove them and not a sanding disc. So all we're going to do is peel that tape back that releases those drips enough to get in there and score it. You don't want to just pull that off in danger of releasing that front edge because it's still nice and fresh. You want to do this the next day while those drips are still pliable. Heat that knife up. That's key. Cuts through it like butter. The reason we're going to sand it is it just has a little bit of a high point. We want to make sure that there's no sharpness with that edge because that tape butt and then we'll, we'll sand that right here and it doesn't take much. All you're, just, all you're doing is just knocking that high point down. There you go. And that's all you need. And then that's really smooth. All right, guys, we've got a mess here. It's time to clean it up. Let's get started right now. Everything's wrapped up. We've got everything caulked out. We'll let this sit for a day. Then it's ready to plumb. Uh, we're very excited on the outcome of this project, and I really like this custom copper table. It looks like a big, thick sheet of copper, but really, it's just a piece of plywood laminated together, stone coat countertop epoxy, and it looks like a million bucks. Hey, this is really cool also because it's a custom-sized piece, which they don't make tables this exact size so for this apartment they need to save space so we got the table just the perfect size our epoxy rocks stone cold Hey, visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Call anytime for free project support. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you soon. Hey guys, we're here in Central Park. The day is coming to an end. What was your favorite part of this project, Mike? You know, there were so many cool elements to this project. I love the fact that we did multiple colors on the same project. Yep. I also loved the most that we were in New York City learning how to do this in this city atmosphere. It was a new experience and a new challenge and totally worth it. It was, the traffic was insane, but we made our way through it, got that project complete and it, we knocked it out of the Central Park. We got Park. this, man. We, we knocked it out of Central Park. Right, yes, man. man. Chris did an amazing job filming for this project. We asked him where he'd like to go, and he wanted to go to the Museum of Modern Art. We're at the Museum of Modern Art here in New York City. This is amazing. There's a band go right behind us, Starry Night. Check this out. Wow.
Hey guys, we're here at Grand Central Station and I want to give a big shout out to Stone Coat Countertops Grand Central Station, which is our customer service. We have so much fun taking your calls, giving you free project support anytime. Don't hesitate to call. Hey, three pro tips that we learned on this project. Number one, you gotta be organized. Why? We wrote a list, we went to Home Depot once, and when you're in a big city, you don't want that logistical nightmare of going back and forth and wasting your time. So go to your job, evaluate what you're gonna need, write it down, and execute that list. Include your team on that, make your notes, and you'll do really well. Thanks again, enjoy the rest of this video right now. Stone Coat Countertop going to work in New York City right now. Let's do it. Uh, welcome to New York Subway. Are you excited? I am. Let's Ever do been this. there? Never. All right. We're going to find new tips and tricks for you right now. Hey, bro. You want to have a battle? Yeah, yeah. Anything, it don't matter. I can flow with anything. All right. Three, two, one. Here we go. Yo, I'm from Oregon, that's where I'm from. I'm a crazy man, got no hair, but that, I don't care. I'll get up in front of the crowd, I ain't proud. I'm from Stone Coast, we bring the heat. We want to meet all the folks out there on the street, cause I'm going to New York. And I eat my food with a spork. But this man right here, he's rapping on the train. He's insane. Let me tell you what, big man coming from my gut. <laughs> Our epoxy rocks, stone cold countertops. All right, guys, it's now time to cut the drips off the underside of the countertops. You don't want to wait too long because they'll become as hard as these 65 million year old dino bones and your time will become extinct. You don't have to be as strong as a woolly mammoth to carry our project up these stairs. Thank goodness. It's lightweight and easy to transport. These guys are awesome. Yeah. Hey guys, do you have a question on how much material you'll need for your size project? Give us a call anytime for free project support. We'll tell you exactly what you need for any size project, even this one. Hey guys, you looking for the best tips, tools, and techniques of how to use our product over existing surfaces? Don't be a dumb dumb. Go to Stone Coat Countertop Insiders right now. Don't be a dumb dumb. Go to Stone Coat Countertop Insiders right now. All right, let's go. Nice. Yes. Yes. Are you filming this at all? Yes. Guys, I'm with Natasha from New York City. Natasha, how are you? I'm good. Good. I'm Tell good. us about this studio apartment. Is that what you call this, a studio it's apartment? It's a studio apartment. Uh, it's on the Upper West Side. Okay. I moved here about five months ago. Um, and I thought I would try and upgrade the space a little bit because in New York, we kind of have a hard time finding affordable housing that is um, also attractive <laughs> right right so uh, i found these amazing guys through instagram thank so you top and so far it has been uh an amazing process to witness you know your apartment is i was picturing something smaller mm. you know you think new york city it's like a closet mm. this is a gorgeous space right now you know obviously you're under construction but we logistically had to figure out how to build these in the in the street basically yes, yes. bring them up coat them up here what's the uh, what's the process been like for you is this what you were expecting i thought you guys were going to get here and that the the, the the epoxy part of the process was going to be like right away uh -huh. i didn't realize how much prep was going to go into it how much you know all that work that had to go into sanding and making sure everything was like completely perfect before you started coating it with the epoxy um, also watching the demo process in the kitchen was also, right was also quite fast were you nervous with all the hammering going on i was on? a little nervous <laughs> I, know, like, I thought my neighbors were gonna like come storming down but um it was, it was great to see and then this has been you know this is like art this is like watching somebody do a jackson pollock style painting you know? nice so it's really cool to see just like the natural variation that happens from it's it, it really is art you and, you, and you 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 wanted to play. You wanted to get in there. Now, what do you think about uh, actually applying a couple veins and stuff? I thought it was a lot of fun to do. Um, again, it's like it's like doing a painting, you right? Know? And it's nice to have 
a, uh, a personal hand in something that's going to live in your home to say, to be able to say and have a story. I'm a storyteller. Right. Yes. So for me, anything that has a story attached to it is a, it's a beautiful thing to be able to say, look, I, I contributed to that vein in this, uh, in this, uh, in this piece. Pride of ownership. Pride of ownership. So you, you're from, originally from Africa. What, what part of Africa? I'm from Ghana. Ghana. West Africa. Wow. Wow. And you've been in the States for how long? Um, a little over 14 years. Uh, I moved to go to university in Atlanta, and I lived there for 11 years. Uh, after school, I worked at the CDC, which is headquartered in Atlanta, for right. seven years. Right. And then I moved to New York. And you, you write freelance, and you write for a pretty large blog, right? I do. I write freelance for actually a number of different pub publications. One of the blogs I write for is Man Repeller, which is sort of a fashion and lifestyle blog. It's very uh, women-focused. Okay. Um, but I also write for, um, for publications like Food & Wine, um, about food and travel. Nice. I have my own blog called The Ecstatic Flash, which is a, a lifestyle blog, and I'm working on a children's book, and I also create and direct a lot of projects in um, in in fashion I've done stuff in film so it's you know it's a it's a melange and you've been introducing some of your Instagram followers to this process it seems like they're excited like I could feel that excitement what what are their reactions of what you're showing them I think my Instagram I don't think my Instagram followers have ever been this engaged <laughs> I have gotten so many messages already from my phone around just but no they love it everybody talks about how uh, how fascinating the process is to watch how artistic it is how beautiful the product is and they love knowing that they can do it themselves that they're that it's, right. a, it's a DIY option for them that they can do it over existing laminate right, right? yes uh, I just actually the last message I got said over existing laminate Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, that's that's cool. Um, so you're right across from Central Park. I am. That's amazing. On our way to work, actually going to pick up stuff from Home Depot, we, 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 we pass the Freedom Tower, we see the Statue of Liberty, we drive over Brooklyn Bridge, and I feel like I'm in Sesame Street at the same time. <laughs> like, this is totally amazing. How is it living in Manhattan? Uh, it's, 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 it's wonderful and maddening all at once. Uh -huh. um, it is, you know, I consider myself very lucky to be able to be living in Manhattan and, and you know, trying to pursue my dreams. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, it's a stressful place to live, you know. The spaces are small. Uh, the MTA, which is the public transportation system, is not ideal. <laughs> um, could be better for, like, sure. a large metropolitan area. It's, you know, we're always... We love the MTA, but we're always sort of ragging on it also just because train delays. Sure, um, sure. But, you know, it's also the, the joy and the beauty of living in Manhattan is you meet such interesting people. Yes. I mean, you are just surrounded by creativity. You are surrounded by ambition. You are surrounded by resilience. Um, all the things that it takes to be a, a re resident and a denizen of this place. And so having that around me, I think, just really feeds me creatively. And yes. it's, just, it's, it's, it's inspiring. I don't think anything comes easy in this city, yeah. but it's worth it. But like if, worth it. if you can plant your roots here and get established, I think the sky's the limit. Absolutely. Uh, I want to say you got a lot of books back here. <laughs> What's your favorite book? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, there's, ugh, I couldn't. I mean, one is this is this Plato's Republic? Is that what that is it's right a, there? It's a, yes, it is. I had to read that in college. I still don't get it. But <laughs> what, what? What's your favorite book? That's a question of the day for mm, you. I, I'm gonna cheat and say mention a couple. Um, one of my favorite novels is called The Elegance of the Hedgehog. It's okay. by a French writer and philosopher named Muriel Barbery. Uh -huh. um, it's just it's really just a meditation on beauty. Wow. Wow. Um, and so it's it's a it's a thinly it's a it's a series of essays thinly disguised as a novel. All right, really all right. Like I love a book called The Art of Travel by Alain de Botton, who is a uh, Swiss philosopher, okay. modern, modern modern day a Swiss philosopher that is you know all about traveling artfully, and he uses different artists as almost as guides Whoa. to teach you about ways in which you can travel as if it's an art. Awesome. It like that. And it is. It, it is. I mean, you know, that's what Mitch and I and Chris were talking about last night was you have to enjoy the journey. You know, we, we come here to a foreign city. We've never done anything like this in a city this big. It, logistically, we knew it was going to be challenging. Energy. That was part of the fun, but you, you got to enjoy that journey, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Paint your journey. Paint I like journey. that. <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's been my experience in New York. It's been it's been a journey indeed, and learning to uh, to appreciate that that's that's the whole point of it. The destination is 
is pointless if you don't enjoy the journey. I like that. Yeah. Anything to say to anybody watching this um, interested in our company and our product, Stone Coat Countertops? Go for it. What are you waiting for? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's really fun to do on your own. I don't know that I could have handled the woodworking aspect of it, but I totally, after seeing you do it, and do it, and after trying it my hands at it, I could totally do this. Right, you, you know? got this. And there's something empowering about making your own stuff. Right. In your hands. So you got this. Yes. Right? Is that right? Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, before we sign off, um, how do people find the blog that you're going to write, the story? Where do they go to find that? And do you just want to tell them how to find you sure. and, 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 and what you're doing? I know you got a travel blog you're yeah. doing. How do they find you? Let's, right. let's tell them. So um, to find me on Instagram, it's at Natasha Nienin. The last name is N-Y-A-N-I-N. I write for a blog called Man Repeller. I do a monthly column for them. Um, you can find them at Man Repeller on Instagram. Uh, the website is manrepeller.com. And my blog is The Ecstatic Flash. So if you look any of those up, you'll be able to find me. And do Perfect. You, yeah, I'll, I'll put that in the comments below so you guys can link to Natasha. What an interesting life you have. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for allowing us to come out here, do this project for you. It's been crazy. It's been fun. And so fun. You, you're a trooper. Like we've masked off your entire floor. You got epoxy that you're living in and you're sleeping right here. So right on. It gets Good for you. It gets better. That's right. That's right. Thank you for coming out and doing this. You guys have been like angels. I, I really appreciate it. Guys, thanks for watching. Until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. You got this. Well, you know what? We'll see you on the next video. All right. <laughs> Super. Nice. That was awesome. Thank you.